Hi, today we will be recording a video to show you all of how to perform the emittance battery starting with tympanometry and then also performing ipsilateral and contralateral acoustic reflexes and acoustic reflex decay. So, we'll be using the GSI TempStar as our device in order to show you how to do what you'll be doing for the labs. And we have our patient here, Carolyn. So the first thing that you want to remember is always, always, always perform otoscopy first, just so you know what kind of ear you'll be dealing with for tympanometry to make sure that there's no contraindications for performing tympanometry. First, perform otoscopy on the right ear. This one looks clear and good. And always be sure to brace, of course, when you're doing otoscopy, as Dr. Carr had mentioned. And then we'll check this ear, and both ears look very clear and healthy. So we can go ahead and start with performing tympanometry. So first, before we get started, I'm going to give you a brief overview of the machine, and mainly the equipment that we'll be putting into the ear. So we have this piece right here, this is the probe setup. This part goes over the patient's shoulder and it sits in this position. So right here we have the tympanometer part and this is also for the ipsilateral ear for doing acoustic reflexes and then the contralateral probe goes on this side for the opposite ear. And we'll put it over shoulder. And then based on what you were able to observe in otoscopy, you'll select the appropriate size of tip for the ipsilateral ear and then you'll, so if we were to select the blue tip for her right ear, then for the contralateral tip we want to go two sizes smaller so we would pick the yellow one. So now we'll go over inserting the tip for the tympanometry probe. And so for this, we'll want to make sure that we're achieving an hermetic seal. So pull back on the pinna, insert the tip, don't be afraid, pushing it in a little bit, give it a nice twist, and then let go of the pinna so that you create a nice seal. Then we'll go ahead and place the contralateral tip. And again, pull back on the pin and this one, you won't achieve a seal like the other. It should just sort of fit in there, just sort of resting in there, kind of like an earbud. All right, so now that we have our patient all set up, we're here at the tympanometer, and we're going to make some selections. The first thing is that you want to make sure that your frequency is correct um, for the probe tone, it's that, that it says 226 probe hertz. And then over here you want to make sure you have the correct ear selected. This changes between right and left ear, this blue button right here. So once all of your choices are correct, you'll want to press down here the start button to initiate tympanometer. It'll run its sweep and as soon as you see it run its sweep and the tracing appears on the screen, then you'll want to press the stop button right away so that it won't continue pressurizing into your patient's ear because that could cause them discomfort. Once you have the tympanogram, we'll go into, instead of temp mode, which is right here, we'll go and press the reflex button. And so the first measurement we're going to do is ipsilateral reflex. So we'll be taking it from that, it'll be taking it from the right ear. So we want to make sure then that our menu choices again are correct. So the, over here, we want to make sure it displays ipsilateral stimulus ear, and we want to make sure that the right ear is selected over here. The next important thing for getting set up is to look at both your stimulus and intensity. So the stimulus button changes the stimulus frequency, and we want to make sure for our ipsilateral reflex testing that we have a thousand hertz selected and we would want to start an intensity of 85 dBHL. Once everything is set up, you want to press start 
to put the probe tone in the patient's ear. You'll see on the screen, which you won't be able to see in the video, but you'll see as you do the exercise that there's a portion that says compliance and there's a little piece that moves back and forth. You want to make sure that's stabilizing to zero before you get started. Next, you'll present the tone, 85 dBHL. And you'll go over in class what to look for and what to change as far as intensity, but 1000 Hz is the only, the only frequency that we use for ipsilateral reflex testing. Now that we've tested ipsilateral reflexes, we're going to come over here to the selection and you know, let's show ipsi, contrastudy, contrapulsed. You'll select contrapulsed and then this time you'll want to switch from right ear to left ear. If it gives you a message that test ear is already in progress, you'll want to make sure to go back down to your buttons and hit stop so you can come back up here and select left ear. So again, once we have our contrapulsed and our left ear selected, we'll press start again to put in the probe tone. Wait for our screen to zero out. And again, we'll start at 1000 Hz for the stimulus frequency and we'll start at 85 dBHL. We'll run through the sequence and again, we'll go over more in lab and you'll also go over in class what to look for, what intensities to do. But you'll start with 1000 Hz, go ahead, present as needed, and then you'll change the stimulus to 2000 Hz, go through the process again, and then you'll go down to 500 Hz, repeat the process of presenting again and getting your reflex, reflex thresholds. Now you've got your contralateral reflexes at 2000 Hz, 1000 Hz, and 500 Hz, so after going through that, You'll take a look cl more closely at 500 hertz and 1000 hertz to see if you can even do reflex testing, but we'll pretend that you can. How you would get to that menu is press special, and then you'll get to your reflex decay screen. Everything should be set up from contra before, so you should have contra, and then your stimulus ear should be, and then you should have left ear as far as where it's measuring, and then you'll go ahead and select the appropriate stimulus so either only either 500 Hertz or 1000 Hertz and the intensity that you select will be 10 dB above whatever the threshold was so we'll say we got a reflex at 90 dB HL so our intensity would then be presenting at 100 so you of course want to let the patient know this is going to be loud. They're going to hear a loud sound for 10 seconds before you go ahead and get started. You'll press start again to put in the probe tone and then you'll hit present and you'll see a tracing on screen for 10 seconds and then you'll go ahead and press stop. It'll automatically stop at 10 seconds but the stop button is just to take that probe tone out of their ear and to close out that test. All right. So after you re have removed the tips from the patient's ear, we'll go ahead and take the control and move it over to the shoulder. And then we'll use our probe tip for tympanometry and ipsilateral reflexes in this ear, again giving it a nice twist as before and pulling back on the pinna. And then over on this side, so now on the right side will be our contra side. Just placing that so it's in snugly, but again won't be a, it won't be a seal like in your ipsilateral ear. So now I've got left ipsy and right contra. Alright, so now you've seen the very important switching over from one side being ipsy, so the right being ipsy, to now the left being your ipsilateral side. And so we would go ahead and start first with performing tympanometry for the left ear, so making sure that's all set up for the left ear. Go ahead and press start, run through that. We'll switch over to reflexes next, our ipsilateral acoustic reflex being sure that we're testing the left ear now at 1000 Hertz. 
and then we'll do our contralateral reflexes. This time, the contrapulse will be the selection, and you'll make sure on screen when you're selecting the ear to select right ear for contra. And then, very, very last, you'll go ahead and do your reflex decay again with contralateral and right as your options. And same frequencies, same button sequence as before. So you can look at the first part of the video if you have any questions. Okay, so at the very end, the most important thing, so you make sure you have your results for all of your labs or for later for your patient records, is that you'll want to print everything. So you'll first press the print button. You'll look in this bottom corner of the screen to make sure that it says all. If not, you'll scroll until it says all, so you print out all your results. And then you'll go ahead and press the print button again. I won't press it right now so we don't waste paper. And then once your results are starting to print, you can go ahead and take the tips out of your patient's ears. Go ahead and remove this. We'll take off the tips for proper cleaning. And then we want to make sure that we clean up after ourselves and so that this cord isn't just hanging. So we'll place it behind here and make sure that everything is cleared out of the way. Once everything's printed, you can go ahead and press clear on this side of the screen and that will clear out all the data for the next person that's performing a test.